Hey dude everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're gonna play around with if and else and moreover with the UI. Now the only problem and the issue that we have while playing with the UI is we don't have any way to reset the view after a couple of seconds. So every time we do something or we bring back something into the UI, we have to reset or kind of a restart our project. That's the only issue. This is not persistent. As we learn more further into the course, things are gonna get much more easy and more amazing as well. So let's go ahead and play around with some of the stuff. So notice we have a couple of variables here, editing mode, auth did fail and auth did succeed. We are gonna use them now. And they were created specifically for the reason that we want to have a little bit of the playing stuff here. So first and foremost, what we are gonna do is we're gonna shift the input uh, or shift the entire UI based on if the keyboard is coming from the bottom or not. Now for that, what we can do is we can just go up here, make sure you are into the Z stack. We can shift the entire view a little bit onto the offset of Y axis. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty fairly simple. You can have this uh, offset here and in the offset, you can put a conditional as well. Surely you can set based on uh, just a Y value or something. If you want to shift it like Y, I want to shift the Y to be, let's just say negative 150. It's gonna move a little bit up. That's okay but I don't want to do it directly. I want to do it based on a Boolean value. So I'm gonna simply check it for the editing mode. So I'm gonna simply go ahead and say editing mode. And if it is true, then only move it to 150 onto the top. Otherwise, just keep it exactly where that is. But the only issue that we have right now is that this editing mode is never getting changed. So this is always uh, remaining as false. So what we can do in order to do something for that, we can pass on this editing mode into these UI fields. Uh, you can pass it on both in the username and password. I'm gonna show you just for once and then you can do it for another one as well. So I'm gonna put a comma and then we have to simply pass on this editing mode, which is gonna go up like that. And we're gonna have a dollar editing mode, there we go. So if we're passing up this here, obviously we should actually do a binding for this one here. So let's go at the bottom and do the binding. Uh, there we go, username field. So I can just, uh, I can write it actually, not just copy paste. So binding var and we're gonna have a editing mode, which is gonna be a simple bool. Okay, and I'll make sure one more time that I'm not making a typo anywhere here. Uh, I usually do a lot of typos. And there we go, so editing mode is all good. This one is also good. And here also we are doing editing mode good. Now what is the advantage of taking this editing mode here is now we can modify or pass on this as a text field up here. So in the text field we have another parameter that we can pass on which is uh, on editing change. So on editing change is uh, a property which can set some things uh, true and false based, based on checking of variety of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this guy up here and we're gonna simply say edit in and then we're gonna just simply use uh, this edit variable to set the values in the editing mode as true and false, okay? Let me just first write it, it's gonna be much more easier after that. So we're gonna simply check if edit is equals equals to true. Now, uh, how this is gonna change as true or false. Now, as soon as user uh, touch the field, automatically this on edit change property kicks in and this edit variable becomes true and false. So that is being done automatically by Apple. Now, based on this true or false value, whatever you want to do, you can just do it. So I'm gonna hit enter, I'm gonna have this one and I'm gonna simply say self dot editing mode is gonna be turned into true. And similar to this, I'll copy this and I will paste it in the else block. There we go, oops, there we go. So based on this, we are now changing the offset value. So that should be it, let's just save this and now let's give it a go and try. I'm gonna run this and hopefully the build will succeed and will succeed, I love that. And let's see, so there we go, right now, and you can notice here, the view is automatically shifting at the top. So I'm gonna hit Command K to bring in the keyboard. So notice here, the keyboard is going up here. Uh, I need to restart the project again. Ah, that's the reason I said editing mode true here and true here as well. I'm gonna turn it to false. Save that so that automatically becomes zero. Remember the code that kicks in, this editing mode code. So let's just try this one more time. 
So if I click on here, the keyboard comes in and automatically the view becomes an offset of 150 there. If your some of the views are is still hindering, uh, just make it a negative of 200, maybe 210, however you like to have it, and that it turns in. As soon as I go out of this, uh, or I just escape this here, or I move into another field or click on somewhere else, now this editing mode gets turned off and automatically the view resets on the Y scale to zero. So that's an interesting stuff. And since we have a little bit more time, we can actually play around with this uh, mode a little bit more. Uh, so we can play around with this action button as well. So I'm gonna go up into this action button, hit enter, and we're gonna play around more on this if and else based on this auth did fail and auth did succeed kind of checking the values uh, from our stored username and password. So let me show you what does that mean. So we're gonna simply check if self dot uh, username is actually equal to, uh, what did we call it? Let me just check that. We called it as stored username. So let's just go ahead and check that. If the self dot username is equals to stored username and we want to check for one more and uh, the self dot password is equals to, let's check it out, it's stored password. Let's go at the bottom. If that is equals to this guy, that means we are gonna change a few variables and based on that, we can actually play around a little bit more. So I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, there we go. I can actually remove this canvas. Yeah, that's actually easier to read now. Okay, so we are checking for two conditions for the username and we are checking for password as well. And based on this, we are gonna reset some of the values. So we're gonna simply start with auth did fail. So if that is true, that means self dot auth did fail is gonna turn into false because no, that's not true, auth didn't fail. And we're gonna have a one more variable which is gonna be self dot auth did succeed. Yes, auth did succeed. So we're going to turn that into true. Okay. And what about the else case? Let's go ahead and take down that as well. In the else case, all we have to do is turn on this auth, uh, auth did fail into yes. So there we go. We're going to simply say true. Okay. True. Come on. There we go. Okay, so we have uh, changed the variable based on the logic. So this is not much doing in here. But now pressing on the button may uh, trigger some of the fields that we can introduce now. So based on auth did fail, because this is the one that is being changed up here, we haven't used much on the auth did success. We can actually do it later on. But in this video, we're going to just check on for, for only auth did fail. So what's going to happen when the auth did fail, we're going to go just above the button or wherever you like we are going to introduce a if condition here. We're gonna simply say if auth did fail, means if this is true, then only we are going to introduce a text block. So in the text block, we are gonna simply say, oops, or something like that. And we're going to just have an offset here as well. You can have your offset wherever you like. I want it to be a little bit above there on the username field or something. So I'm gonna simply say on the Y axis, shift it to like negative 15 or, or 10. However it goes on, it just is a matter of trial and working on that. The only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the foreground color to be dot red, or you can say colors dot red as well. So there we go, that's all what we are doing. And this is my username and password. So I'm gonna just run this again and see if our tickering <laughs> with these if and else is actually working nicely or not. So let's go up here. Okay, so I'm gonna hit on to the username. So I'm gonna simply say Hitesh and for the password, again, the password is hiding behind so I can just get rid of that. And for the password, I'm gonna simply say my name, but we need to actually trigger that as false to see the oops value. So I'm gonna just add one, two, three here. And I'm gonna hit the login and there we go. We see the oops a little bit here. The only issue right now is uh, we haven't actually talked much about the animation that how to get rid of this or something like that. And surely we are not doing anything once we have the success as well. So let's just go ahead and write the success and it's not doing anything on the success. So in the next video, we're gonna take down very quickly that how the success can be also triggered with another animation or a text block. Let's go ahead and do that in the next video.